all of my teams, agents and stuff I work with on a coaching basis, I get people obsessed with the output, not the outcome. Don't focus on how many appointments am I going on? At least right now, don't get focused on how many deals have I done this month? Get focused on talking to people that are going to get you to where you want to be. Make phone calls, talk to people that want to buy or sell real estate. And as a byproduct, you will do deals if you solve their problems adequately. But in the beginning, as a newer person that's new to the industry, all you should be focusing on is like literally breaking your phone. I want so many dials to go through there that like, AT&T or Verizon calls you and is like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Like, this is insane. That's when you know you're doing it the right way. Chris, thank you for joining me for our Thought Leader Spotlight Series. I'm your host over here, Matt Camp, head of partnerships at Deal Machine. And on these, we like to shine a spotlight on industry experts like yourself, hear your inspiring stories, and really educate our audience on the lessons you've learned and where you see the world evolving. So uh, today, really excited to welcome on Chris Gianos. Uh, a real estate and prop tech, prop tech expert. Uh, we worked at Zillow starting at age 19, the youngest to ever do that. That's pretty wild. Uh, yeah. Sold over 1.5 billion in real estate personally. You've turned around brokerages to take him up to $100 million plus in transactions. Um, you're the co-founder and CEO of Humanize, which you've really focused on kind of simplifying and really really redefining the recruitment process, process to help agents and uh, agent teams and brokerages grow. So, yep. you know, love to dig into that. And then you're a speaker and coach with Tom Ferry Education as well. So you've got quite a few things going on, man. Thanks for taking time out. Absolutely, dude. It's uh, yeah, it's a mouthful when you say it that way. I'm like, wow, <laughs> am I really doing all those things right now? And it's kind of like, maybe I should do less. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm stoked to be here, man. Um, I love chopping it up and kind of sharing yeah. uh, what got me here and what's not going to get me there and kind of lessons I've learned along the way. It usually helps uh, make someone's life easier, which I'm all about. Yeah, that's what we're all about here. I love uh, you coming on and giving as much value as you can to, to our group. I, I'm sure. Super, super helpful, man. So um, I'd love to start there, like talking more about your journey. Like I love to hear how you got into real estate at such yeah. an early age. Like, can you, can you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah. So, um, not to start on a morbid note, but I was uh, I was 17 years old when I graduated high school. Um, I had some family things happen. Mother got sick, passed away from cancer, and I had to help my dad basically raise my two younger brothers. And uh, so graduated high school early at 17 years old, um, took an exit exam and was like, all right, cool, done with that. And uh, from 17 to like 18 and a half, I, I really helped raise my two younger brothers while my dad kind of figured out what we were going to do and how we were going to make it happen. So I say that because uh, I'm sure some listeners will resonate with this. Like you really don't have an opportunity not to like grow up, right? You got to, you got to go fast. Led me to working after we got that all settled. My dad introduced me to a friend of his, a uh, guy named Brian Hebb, who got me my kind of start in the industry. He introduced me to a friend of his that was, uh, they were raising money for renewable energy projects um, for like uh, solar deals out in the middle of the desert, which it was in closet and hiding was like real estate transactions, right? Just big ones. And uh, I was fortunate enough to like, basically this guy was like, hey, I can't afford to pay you yet. It's a new business. I'll buy you lunch every day and you can come hang out at our office. And I was like 18 and like, cool, that sounds sweet. I'm going to do that. And uh, helped him with that for I'd say six months before they got their first like real big funding and then it turned into a paid position and I was basically like a glorified gopher for a year. And all I did was dry cleaning and note take. I was, I was a literal gopher personal assistant for this guy, Julio Macedo in Newport Beach. It was an awesome experience. And uh, after being with them for like a year, I realized after seeing them grow their sales team that like, hey, I want to get on the phone. Um, I, like that was something that always kind of naturally kind of drew me in coincidentally, like Wolf of Wall Street came out around that same time. So like saw that movie and was like, I can do that. I mean, and yeah. uh, so uh, long story short, they ended up winding down that part of their business. And like, I was kind of of a free agent at that point. And uh, I was like, I've never worked in a professional setting before. I've been someone's gopher and kind of right hand and assistant. And uh, something drew me in. I got online. I remember I was on Career Builder. Like, okay, that's probably a good place to start. I have no formal education outside of a high school diploma. And I, uh, I applied for a job at Zillow and in inside sales. And uh, I was like, there's no way that these people hire me. And sure enough, like they called me and gave me an interview. And I went, I never forget it. I went to JCPenney and bought a suit and uh, like probably looked like a complete nerd, like not tailored at all. The pants were too long. I like cuffed, I looked like a, uh, an idiot, so to speak. 
And uh, I went in and I interviewed with a couple of folks. And then this guy, John Bowler, who's still a good friend of mine, came in and was like, hey, why should we hire you? And I was like, no one will work harder and I will do exactly what you tell me to do. Right. And for whatever reason, they went out on a limb. Um, I went through training and then spent five years there. And uh, it was number one sales rep in their Orange County office company wide a couple of times and like really kind of cut my teeth in the whole sales space. So that's how I got my start into the industry. Um, got really good at being on the phone and then it naturally segued into, hey, I work at Zillow. I see all these real estate agents that are making all this money. I wonder if I can do that. So mm -hmm. in 2017, I left, partnered up with a client of mine, popped open a brokerage and uh, that's kind of all she wrote. Um, I just kind of jumped headfirst into the industry and have, uh, I've been licensed ever since. It's been a super cool wild ride. No kidding, man. That, that's a, that's a heck of a story too. I know yeah, you're not nuts. one of the youngest to ever be at Zillow. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's unbelievable. So, uh, you know, speaking on sales, like, you know, you, you mentioned that. I mean, I know you've always been really at the top of those sales leaderboards, like, and yeah. you've obviously been, uh, you know, natural at that. Can you, can you tell me more on like how you separate yourself, why you think you're, you're different when it comes to sales? Like, I, I love to hear your opinion on how people yeah. can take your lessons learned, right? I think the best salespeople are the most empathetic salespeople. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of content going around right now about, I see it all the time. It's like these hard clothes, bow nosed clothes, pushy, almost used car salesman-y stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a big believer that in sales, like he who listens the most wins, right? And when you put your ego aside and think less about, hey, how much am I going to get paid here? And instead start thinking about, like, hey, what's this person's problem and how can I solve it and take all the stress off their plate? Mm -hmm. um, especially in the industry that we're in, right? Like in real estate and specifically on the deal machine side, like wholesaling and cold calling for flips and, and opportunities like that and door knocking, there's a lot of kind of, I, I don't want to say grossness, right, about the space, but there's a lot of people that I've kind of experienced myself before on the wholesaling side and working with wholesalers myself it's sometimes a little like not so people like remove their ethics from the situation. And I'm a big believer in you can do the right thing and still win at a high level. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that sales at its core, the best salespeople lead people to self-discovery. You have an idea. Sales is nothing more than like a transferal of enthusiasm, right? It's helping someone and giving them enough information to actually make a decision. When you, make it all about you. It's difficult to do that. So I think at the end of the day, when I first started out, I probably wasn't very good at this, right? You, you intrinsically just want to win by any means necessary. And as I've gotten older, got into the industry at 19, I'm almost 30 years old now. Um, I've learned a lot about you can still win and still have people's best interests at heart. Right. Okay. And now that my sale has changed from selling zip codes at Zillow to selling houses to then selling agents on joining my team to now selling teams on joining Humanize, right? It's, mm -hmm. It is possible to win and be the good guy, right? And I think that that doesn't get talked about enough because everyone wants to push people into doing the thing they want them to do. And it's like, what about if it's something that you guys both want to do? Right. Mm -hmm. What about if it's not a, Hey, I want you to do this and you don't want to do it. What happens if you help them make a decision? That this is what's actually good for their business. And then you can sleep at night. You don't have a, a your moral compass isn't, isn't conflicted at that point. So does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, that resonates so much. I mean, I think it's uh, I love that approach as well of being just so genuine and authentic around trying to, how to solve a problem for somebody, how to really yeah. make it a true win-win like that. And that's, I mean, I've, worked on partnerships at a couple companies now and, and why I love it so much here is I'm always trying to trying to do that myself personally. Um, yeah, it's just, it's conflicting, man. Cause you see as someone that's getting into the industry or, or a different part of the industry, even right. You're going from wholesaling to an agent or from prospecting for your own flips to selling the paper or whatever it looks like the kind of gurus in the space, the guys that really have large followings, I don't think it's real, right? When you look at some of these guys, like I'm not going to name names, but you see some of these big influencers in the space that they're almost angry. They're on social media, they're yelling, they're like ripping people apart on cold calls and stuff. And like, 
that might work. But at the end of the day, I promise you that if you are like new to the industry or trying to get your bearing or trying to get traction that I don't know, I'm a, a kind of spiritual guy, right? I think that the universe rewards good people and punishes bad people, right? Is the simplest way to think about it. And I think from a standpoint of like, do good shit, good shit happens to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And people forget that. Um, so sure, there might be some easy deals that you can lay up by compromising your morals or your integrity or how you talk to people. But I think in the long run, um, you pay for that in some way, shape or form. Right. And whether that be the deal falling apart or maybe your next deal falling apart, um, karma is very real and it catches up to you. So don't be afraid to, uh, to like do the right thing, even if it means you losing temporarily, because mm -hmm. I yes, think I, in the long term that pays mm -hmm. off. Yeah. Play the long term game. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, so do you, you know, we do speak to quite a few newbies who are, who are thinking about getting into the space or trying to do that first deal, or maybe they're really trying to start to scale. Like, can you give advice there on how to go about doing it the right way, how to talk to sellers correctly? Like, yeah. I'd love to hear, you know, more you know, just those action steps there, right? So if I could go back in a time machine, right, and thinking about all the investments that I've made, right, all the properties that I've flipped, all the paper that I've flipped, all this stuff. If I could go back in a time machine, I think that you become an infinitely more effective salesperson when you're educated and informed on what you're selling and what your like process is, and you actually have experience being on the other end of the deal. I think a lot of people, there is no quick money in this business, regardless of what the person, the guru on Instagram says, regardless of what this person on a YouTube ad trying to sell you their course says, there is no quick money, right? There's there's faster ways to do it. Sure. Like taking a shortcut and learning from other people. That's a shortcut. That's not an easy way to do it. It's simple. This is, this quote has been like burned in my brain now. It is simple, but it's not easy. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is like the, that makes your eyes cross almost like what that's true about everything almost. So learning what I've learned and knowing what I know now, if I could go back in a time machine before I even started thinking about investing or doing all these like complex real estate transactions, I would either buy a house myself, right? So actually conduct a transaction where you're a buyer going through it, or I would get a real estate license and I would do a couple of deals, even if it's with a friend or a family member or someone that's, that's letting you represent them. The reason being is I don't think people understand how hard it is. Right. And I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from doing it. I don't think people think about the complexities of what transactions look like. And I promise you, if you've got intimate experience keeping a deal together that's burning down, when you're when you cold call a seller that let's say is dealing with eminent domain, right? Or a conservatorship or something, the property's decrepit and falling apart, you have no clue what that guy's going through emotionally right? Unless you've been involved in one before. I remember when we did our first conservator deal, it was a, it was a nightmare. The guy the house was falling apart. The people that were living in it weren't in the best shape, probably some illicit substances involved in stuff, but the guy was still a human, right? And he was having his property seized by the city. It was a horrible situation. Trying to navigate that without understanding what was actually going on. I remember mm -hmm. every step of the way thinking, oh, I got it now. I got everything figured out. And then you get another letter from an attorney right? Or you get a letter from the city saying, Hey, you have to be at this hearing on this date at this time. And it's like, what is going on? Right? So if I could go back in a time machine, um, I would get a real estate license first and get some experience doing deals before I jumped into everything. And then I would pick one thing, right? It, it's really easy with how many shiny objects there are now. There's so many people selling so much different stuff that like, we have to remember it takes time to get good at things. It's not a situation where you can say, Hey, I'm going to start wholesaling properties. And like, you're just going to instantly be good at it. Right. And then what usually happens is people jump in, they've got all the systems and tools and processes they need. They give it a solid effort for like a week and then go, wait a second, I'm getting my butt kicked. I've made a hundred phone calls a week, which is nothing in the grand scheme of things. There's been days where I've made 150, 200 outbound phone calls a day. Right. Especially working at Zillow in the old days. I remember hand dialing the phone 200 times a day, which is just insane. And that makes it sound, that makes it sound like those stories, like back in my day, we used to walk 10 miles in the snow to school. You know what I mean? But like, seriously, it was, it was, the reps is real. Mm -hmm. what was that? The putting in the reps that, that is real. Yeah. That the is, reps yeah, are super yeah. important. But like mm -hmm. the point I'm trying to make is 
getting sticking with one thing for an ind like indescribable amount of time. I'm not saying spin your wheels unintentionally, but I think it's important to remember that good things take time, right? I saw a, uh, I was reading, I was on Twitter this morning, now known as X, and I was reading a thread um, about Dan Corkill, who's the follow-up boss, uh, founder and CEO. He was a super cool dude, friend of mine. Um, and the guy in the thread said, uh, it was like a case study on follow-up boss's success. They just got acquired for half a billion dollars in cash by Zillow. And it said, the story of follow-up boss is 12 years, or 12 years of overnight success, right. right? Which itself is like an oxymoron. And it, it kind of got me thinking, this is the same concept. There's so many different ways to make money in real estate. I think you have to pick one and go deep for a like definitive amount of time. You have to sit down and go, cool. I'm going to do this for at least six months this way before I decide it doesn't work and I try something else. Regardless of what it is, if you're cold calling to wholesale and flip paper, awesome. Do it for six months. Make 20,000 phone calls and then tell me you want to try something different, right? You want to be a, a residential real estate agent, right? Go hang your license. You're going to circle prospect for listings. Make 20,000 phone calls and then tell me that you want to try something different and have a focus on a different niche. But we typically people that are drawn to this industry are very entrepreneurial, right? Which comes with ADD and my, my partner calls it shiny object syndrome, right? Where I'm like, Ooh, look at that. I want to try that. Let's do this. Right. And it's very easy being that type of person to like get distracted and want to try stuff. And we naturally gravitate towards things we're good at. Um, the magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding doing, which is like a crazy way to think about it, right? Like just pick one thing and go deep with it. So if I was a new agent, that's all I would be thinking about. If I was someone just new to the real estate space in general, pick one niche and do it for six months pinned in sixth year. And then you can say, Hey, I tried it. I want to try something different. But usually the crazy thing is if you do something like that for six months and go that hard with effort, usually you don't have to switch what you're doing because you'll find overnight success, right? Absolutely. It's, it's nuts, dude. So, so that's yeah. your question. Absolutely. I mean, for sure. I mean, the, uh, in general on the deal machine front too, I mean, when people are saying like, Hey, I'm trying this space, it's not working for whatever reason, like a hundred percent of the time <laughs> or close to, I would say, we can sit down and say like, well, how many, you know, how, how much time have you put into this? How much, you know, how, how many, like you said, how many calls have you made? How many X, Y, Z's? And it's, you know, vast majority of the time it's like, Hey, they just didn't quite have that expectation set correctly of like how much hard work it is to get into that. And that you really yeah. have to commit and say, yeah, I'm going to commit to this and take it serious. And you know, that those are the people who, you know, break through. And we, I mean, we've had over 10,000 deals done using the old machine at this point. Like Oof. when we look at the trends of how people are doing it, it's that it's they're breaking through, through that, that commitment. Right. Yeah. The thing to remember is that if it was easy, everyone would do it. Mm -hmm. Right. If it was e I'm going to say it again, cause it's so important. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Everyone would find success with everything. There's a reason why 10% of the industry does 90% of the business, right? It's because it's not easy. So to your point, like <clears throat> this is a game of reps, right? And it's really easy as someone in real estate to get focused on like, for the mass majority, we don't get paid unless we perform, right? Mm -hmm. If you make a hundred phone calls on a Monday, congratulations, no one's writing you a check at the end of the day, right? Typically we get paid when we, when we close a deal of some sort, whether it be paper or an actual transaction or whatever it looks like. With that in mind, we get super focused on outcomes, not activities. So all of my team's agents and stuff I work with on a coaching basis, I get people obsessed with the output not the outcome, right? You need to be focused if you're on the real estate side. Don't focus on how many appointments am I going on? At least right now, don't get focused on how many deals have I done this month. Get focused on talking to people that are going to get you to where you want to be. Have, mm -hmm. you can go even more macro than that. Conversations are even lower in the funnel than just outbound activity. If your goal is, hey, I'm going to go and door knock in this neighborhood, it's not how many conversations as I had, how many houses did I knock on the actual door of, right? If you're going to do mailers, it's not how many responses did I get, at least yet. It's how many did I mail out for how long equals how many responses am I going to get? It's mm -hmm. the same concept with circle prospecting or whatever it is on the real estate side. Make phone calls, talk to people that want to buy or sell real estate. And as a byproduct, you will do deals. 
if you solve their problems adequately. But in the beginning, as a newer person that's new to the industry, all you should be focusing on is like literally breaking your phone. I want it. I want so many dials to go through there that like AT&T or Verizon calls you and is like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Like, this is insane. That's when you know you're doing it the right way. It's a great mindset, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah absolutely. And uh, especially when you take that, like you said, the framing around how do I help people? How do I approach it with that kind of a uh, of a mindset, even when it's from your first dial to your, your thousandth, you know? Um, getting those reps in over and over again, that's, you know, that's where the deals come from. So yeah, Mike Tyson says, uh, winning is doing something you don't like, like you love it. Right. <laughs> that's a great quote. I, I think that's how he said it, but it was like, or discipline, I think was what it was. The outcome was, he said, discipline is doing something you hate, but doing it like you love it. Right. I used to, this sounds crazy, but it's still in the old days, like, we were on a sales floor. There was hundred hundred people in a room, right? We were all at open cubicles, no offices, all cold calling all day long, right? And in those situations and in those rooms, it's really easy to get caught up in the outcome. Like, dude, I remember days where you'd make 150 phone calls and you'd have 20 minutes of talk time. Just no one was picking up the phone. And if that carried over into the next day from like your output, that's not going to happen every day. Some days you might make 20 or 30 phone calls and set up two or three appointments and you're cruising, right? But if you start to compound negative energy, then what ends up happening is when you're not in a rut, the people aren't getting the best possible version of you, right? Yeah. So like I would get obsessed with, in the beginning, we were tracking like no's. If the, the more no's I can collect means I'm that much closer to a yes, which sounds mm -hmm. cliche and a lot of people talk about that. But like now... Dude, I don't know how many people I've talked to about Human Eyes over the last six months. I, I This sounds crazy. I care about my business a lot. I'm super invested in it, all of our employees. I know that I can't control if someone buys or not. For me now, it's just a matter of, cool, if I talk to a bunch of people and our sales team talks to a bunch of people on a daily, weekly, monthly basis as a byproduct, if we have a good enough product, people will buy it, right? So it's just a, it's a math equation. Focus on the output, not the outcome. Love that. Yeah. yeah. You know, for, for humanize, I mean, I mentioned it earlier a little bit of like, yeah. you know, you guys really focusing on that recruitment process. Can you tell us more about, you know, what you guys are trying to accomplish with your vision for that and even yeah. like what makes a great team? I mean, I'd love to hear that too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to touch on the, what makes a great team thing first, right? Okay. Because that segues into our product. We find that in 2024, the demo average demographic of an agent is changing fast. Before it was a national statistic was it was like a 54 year old woman was the national real estate agent like statistic. Now that's not happening. Guys like you and I are coming into the space going, wait a second, unpopular opinion, right? Like the way real estate is bought and sold and expectation from consumers of service providers is a little archaic, right? Like real estate agents for the most part are lower on the totem pole of trusted professionals than used car salesmen and plumbers. I didn't make that up. That's an actual statistic, right? In terms of trusted professionals. In knowing that, there's an opportunity for high performance real estate teams and companies to and agents to shine. All you have to do, which sounds crazy, is like take care of your customers, right? Which it, it, it sounds like rocket science, but the power dynamic in real estate has always been weird because agents held the keys to the kingdom. Before Zillow and Realtor.com and all these websites, if you wanted to buy or sell a house, you walked into a Coldwell banker and like talked to the lady at the front and they got, got you hooked up with an agent. Now, a consumer can go online and it's, it's simple as Uber or Postmates, right? You can go online and request a showing now. So consumer expectation has changed a lot, which means agent expectation from broker has changed a lot or broker or team leader. So we find that the best teams and brokerages we work with provide tangible value. And what I mean by that is I have a nice office and I have great splits is not enough value anymore from a, a value standpoint to actual agents. We find that our top customers, folks that just find the best amount of success with us are focused on what we call LTS. Leads, training, and support are what makes a good brokerage great now, right? Mm -hmm. Splits come secondary to actual tangible value. So if you're a budding team leader or you're a current team leader or broker owner, I would be thinking about those three things because in 2024, that's why agents are actually moving, right? That's why you see the meteoric rise of these mega teams, right? That are basically just brokerages, but providing tangible value to agents. 
I think we're going to continue to see consolidation within those businesses. Now on that token, those are the types of businesses that Humanize loves to partner with, right? Because we know based on their value prop that if we bring them at bats of people that want to join their team or brokerage, that it's a, a deal made in heaven, right? So the way Humanize works is we built it ourselves as a solution for ourselves first. I had a, in May of 2020, I got the call from Zillow that they were going to give us a Zillow Flex account, which is for those of you guys that are familiar, you can go to Zillow, you can buy leads. It's very expensive. They convert at a high level, but it's very expensive. Zillow in 2020 came to us and said, hey, we're doing this pilot. Um, we're no longer going to be able to purchase leads from us. Instead, we're going to give you the leads at no cost up front, and we're going to charge you a referral fee at closing. And in my brain, I'm like, whoa, cool. There's no barrier to entry anymore, and we can just grow really quickly. And Zillow basically said, hey, as fast as you guys can recruit, we'll give you more opportunity. And I went, okay. What happens if I recruit 100 agents in the next six months? And they were like, then we'll give you thousands of leads. And it's, okay, cool. Let's, let's go. Off for the races. Yeah. So between August 1st of 2020 and January 3rd of 2023, I recruited like 240 agents. We sold like a billion and a half dollars in real estate. It was insane. But I created Humanize for ourselves first internally, this process. And after doing it for two and a half years, uh, started thinking about, hey, I wonder if this would work in other places. And I called a couple of my friends that run a real estate team up in Seattle and another team in New Jersey and said, hey, I've got this thing. Can you test it? Can I test it for you? Right. Let's do We'll do it for free. I've got this process. Can we see if it works? And uh, after like two weeks of testing, right, and I'll get to what the product does here momentarily, these people are like, hey, can we keep this? And how much does it cost? And I was like, yeah. okay, on to probably on to something, right? Yeah. So the way Humanize works is we know that there is a large population of agents that are going online proactively doing research on which types of teams or brokerages they want to join. So when an agent goes on Google and types in real estate team in Dallas hiring or whatever it may be, when you search stuff like that, what indexes are about 20 to 30 different job websites. So LinkedIn and ZipRecruiter and Glassdoor and Indeed and Monster.com, all these places. Humanize does what we call the three S's, right? Source, screen, and schedule interviews with agents. So the way that works is we write customized job descriptions for every team we work with. That gets put into the Humanize platform. Humanize then functions the same way that the MLS does. So when you sign a new listing, you put it in the MLS so it goes to Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com. Mm -hmm. Humanize does the same thing, but with jobs. So it syndicates out to all these different platforms. We cast a really wide net. When an agent actually finds the role and applies for it, our system puts them through a qualifying funnel. So this is now the second S. Mm -hmm. We validate that they have an active real estate license in whichever state they're interested in applying for a role in. We validate that they have an interest in having a conversation about moving their license. Once they're validated, we've now screened that person. They're allowed through to a calendar that's hooked up to your calendar where they can self-schedule an interview directly into your calendar. So at that point, as a broker or a team leader or recruiter, all you have to worry about doing is picking up the phone and calling someone at a time that has been pre-booked into your calendar, right? Traditionally, the real estate recruiting process is you get a list of 1,000 agents and you make 5,000 phone calls, right? And you're just cold calling people all day. Humanize is the opposite of that. You pull a lever, we book appointments directly into your calendar. We give you coaching scripts and talk tracks and a CRM to keep track of all of it. Most of our teams are recruiting three to five agents a month on a pretty consistent basis. Wow. So it's a tactical solution to grow your real estate team or brokerage. Love that, man. I mean, yeah. I think uh, that, that it's so cool to hear how you guys, you know, again, solve that problem yourself. I mean, that's similar, similar to our deal machine founding story is being able to use technology to take a process and take it to the next level. And, and we, you know, on our end, we didn't, you know, invent the pro, you know, yeah. anything that we're, we're bringing to the table. It's how to use technology to make that way more efficient and effective. So it's, it's so cool to see, uh, you know, an entrepreneur scratching their own itch, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. I think the best companies are started that way because I understand what our customers' problems are because mm -hmm. I had them. Right. Mm -hmm. I had the same pain point and then fixed it and went, wait a second. Other people probably have this pain point. So it's been awesome, man. We get to work with uh, many of the top teams and brokerages in the country. Um, yep. We're in 37 states now and we're uh, we're having fun. So it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Well, I mean, this has been an awesome interview too, man. I know we're uh, only got a few more minutes left. So sure. I, Chris, I'd love to hear um, how people can get in touch with you. How can they get sure. involved with you and humanize? And, you know, we'll try to link to all that down below as well. The best way to get a hold of me, believe it or not, is on Instagram. And the reason being is we put out a ton of content, everything from lead conversion, best practices to recruiting, best practices to growing a team. 
Uh, my Instagram handle is at my first name, Chris dot my last name, Giannos. Um, there's a ton of content on there. There's links to schedule calls, whatever you guys want. We have it on there. Um, and I believe it or not respond to DMS on a pretty regular basis. So always happy to chop it up with anyone that's getting into the industry and, uh, yeah, look me up. Perfect, man. And then I know it's humanized.io. So we'll link to that as well. Yep. Um, you know, we'll, we'll include all that down below here, but Chris, uh, again, thank you so much for the time. I know you're a busy guy. So I really, really appreciate you jumping on with me. Likewise, brother. Looking forward to it, Matt. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone watching this is Matt Camp with Deal Machine and happy deal finding.